What's up you guys, Mo Awesome from Awesome MTB and this is the brand new Transition Sentinel. Now this bike is going to be part of a much bigger series that we're going to be releasing in a few weeks. Stay tuned for that. But I felt like I had to give you guys my first impressions on this bike because I know that a lot of you guys are going to probably be in the market for something like this. This is going to be a very capable do everything trail bike and yeah I think a lot of people are going to be stoked. Now before we get into the review of the brand new Transition Sentinel I do want to give a huge thank you to Pro Bike Supply for sponsoring this video. If you guys didn't know Pro Bike Supply is one of the most awesome online bike shops out there. They have so many rad brands to choose from. Their customer service is second to none and whether you're in the market for a stock build or you want to build up your dream bike they work with some of the best brands in the industry and their prices are amazing and they really do help make your dream bike a reality at an amazing price point and if you guys let them know that you guys are friends of the channel they will take care of you they also have the brand new transit sentinel in stock ready to go so be sure to reach out to them let them know that we sent you thank you for Bike for sponsoring this video and let's get into the review so what is the new transition sentinel transition really wanted to go for a do everything trail bike that could be ridden all over the country so this year the Sentinel actually gets a little bit steeper up front. You have a 64 degree head angle. In the rear you have 150 millimeters of travel. It can go up to 160. Up front you have 160 millimeters of travel. Now this bike also has size proportional chainstays and they are a little bit longer this year. The actual bottom bracket height was raised slightly and up front you have a little bit of a higher stack height as well. Now the new Sentinel also has internal frame storage. Now unlike other bikes out there the frame storage is actually separate from the actual water bottle cage. So you can get into the frame without taking that water bottle off. The bike also has a flip chip and you can run this bike as a mullet. I've been running it with 29ers both front and rear. Now like I said I've been riding this bike for the last two months and it really is one of the most versatile trail bikes I've ever ridden. I've been absolutely in love with the numbers and the changes that transition made to the Sentinel. In terms of the test bike that I've been riding this is a size extra large. I am six foot two for reference with an 805 saddle height and this thing fits me like a glove. Now up front we have a Fox 36 with a Grip X2 dampener. In the rear we have a Fox Float X rear shock. For drivetrain we have an XO transmission on this build. For the wheel set we have a DT Swiss XM481 with 350 rear hub. For front tire we have a Maxxis Asagai and the rear we have a Minion DHR2. For brakes we have Ceram Maven brakes, the silver edition. The handlebar is a one-up carbon handlebar with a 30 millimeter rise with Transition's own in-house anvil stem. We have the brand new Fox Transfer dropper post out here with 240 millimeters of travel. For pedals we have my Deity T-Mac pedals which has been awesome, so much traction there. Now, now, before we get into what I absolutely love about this bike and some things that I don't necessarily love, let's hit the trails and show you guys how this rides. All right, you guys, we are out here in Aliso Viejo. This is probably one of my favorite places to test bikes out. And I've been riding the new Transition Sentinel for the last two months. This bike has been an absolute blast, both on flowy trails, as well as some of the more steeper offerings we have out here. This is the infamous Five Oaks Trail with braking bumps galore. The Transition Sentinel is just going to soak it all up. And man, this bike has such an active suspension design while still staying super poppy and playful. Uh, nice, through the braking bumps. Uh, really good corner sections down here and a nice little pop down here. That's something that I love about Giddy Up. I feel like Giddy Up really is that active suspension design that every rider dreams of out on the trails while still having a playful feel. And Transition is a company that loves to jump their bikes. And you can tell this suspension design rewards poppiness. This is my favorite style of riding. Nice steep shoes. A little drop right there. So planted while still staying very maneuverable in and out of corners. I like that Transition didn't go too aggressive on this Geo because it still feels like a good trail bike while still having that all mountain feel. Ooh. And down here we have a couple of really good corners. Now this bike definitely has a little bit more of a longer drawn out feel in these corners through the chunk. No issues down here. And then very icy section, slippery rocks. 
No issues for the transition sense. This is the only wall ride in Laguna. <laughs> nice. The thing that I've been loving about the transition Sentinel is even though it's one of the most capable 150 mil bikes I've ridden, it still has a very good pep in its step out on the trail. So right now I'm out of the saddle sprinting and honestly, it just wants to go. And that's something I'm very happy that transition kept with the Sentinel. Feels like it's a very well-rounded 150 millimeter trail bike. What well, goes down must go up. The Transition Sentinel, couple of notes here. Seat angle feels dialed on steeper climbs. Very steep, I have a high saddle height, 805. And it feels like I am pretty on top of that BB. This is one of those technical sections. Goes up, plenty of traction. Still very maneuverable up front, I do like that it's not as slack of a heading as the previous Sentinel. This is definitely a much flower your trail rocket. And I feel like this is where the Transition Sentinel shows a different side to its personality. Because while it still is very capable on the descent, on trails like this that are a little bit mellower, kind of require a bike that has a little bit more pop, the Sentinel steps up to the challenge and still stays fun. The front end is just so maneuverable and the bike really does have this awesome playful feel in and out of corners. So sick. And then it just soaks that stuff right up. Coming in right here to the infamous rock garden. This thing, ah, monster truck nature through the chunk. And you can really tell the frame itself is definitely, I would say, on the beefier side. And it feels like it would be so capable in a bike park. Definitely no confidence will ever be lost. Another thing that I love about the Sentinel, so precise in its line choice. I like that it has a slightly higher stack height. And then through here, where you just want a little bit of extra pop over that. Man, the Sentinel, so good. Just a really great all around bike. Nice corners through here. Now, while it's not, I would say, the most nimble in and out of corners, it is slightly longer in terms of rear chainstay. It still holds its own and has that playful feel. And man, soaks that up. The sketchiest part of the trail right now. These ruts down here, so many and so plentiful, but the Sentinel just eats it up. So composed when the going gets rough but still has the ability to play around on trails like Rocket. Nice. God, I like I'm able to kind of pick my way through those ruts. Such a maneuverable front end. And that was Rocket. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed some of that riding footage. Now, like I said, this bike is part of a bigger project that will be coming out in a few weeks on this channel. Really quickly, let's talk about some of the things that I love about this bike and some things that I don't necessarily love. And then you guys will have to stay tuned to a series that this Transistor Sentinel will be a part of. Well, the first thing that I absolutely love about the new Transistor Sentinel is how versatile this bike feels. Like I said, I really do feel like Transition had to take a step back and think to themselves, okay, Geo with mountain bikes has come so far. I mean, Transition is one of those companies that definitely led the charge for progressive geometry. And I think what they started to realize is that year after year, bikes have kept going longer, lower, and slacker. Now something long, low, and slack is gonna do well, especially if you have fast, high-speed terrain. Places like the PNW, British Columbia. However, when you take that same bike out to the desert like Moab, Sedona, anywhere in Arizona, Phoenix, South Mountain, you're gonna notice that a bike that's that long, low, and slack is gonna have difficulty picking its line, especially on steep, techy terrain. And I feel like with the new Transistor Sentinel, they came back to the drawing board and they said, okay, we want the Sentinel to be a do everything mountain bike. And that's what I think the end result is. Up front, you're gonna get a little bit more of a conservative head angle. Like I said, they went a little bit steeper. So now you have a 64 degree head angle up front. Now in the rear, you still have size proportional chainstays. However, they're a little bit longer on this bike as well. Now 64 degrees still is fairly slack up front. And when you combine that with a little bit of a longer chainstay, you still get a lot of high speed stability. However, transition has raised the bottom bracket slightly. And you also have a little bit of a higher stack height up front. Now, that combination of a higher stack height up front with a slightly higher bottom bracket, but longer chainstay and still a fairly slack head angle with 64 degrees gives you that mix of both worlds. This bike still has plenty of high speed stability and that aggressive nature you would expect from a transition bike. 
However, you still get that maneuverability you want on steep, techy terrain, especially when it's tight and twisty. It's the best of both worlds. I feel like a Geo like this is gonna do really well in British Columbia, PNW, more high speed techy terrain. And then you're still gonna be able to take that same bike out to the desert, Moab, South Mountain, and it's gonna handle those slow speed tech moves very well. And you're gonna have the control over your line choice that you would want out in the desert. Now, another thing that I love about this bike is the suspension design. Now, Transition has the giddy up suspension platform Platform. And I really do like that mix of an active suspension approach while still retaining a poppy, playful feel in and out of corners. And you can definitely feel that out on the trails where even though the bike feels glued to the ground over tech, when you go to pop in and out of corners, it still has this very playful pop to it that you would want from your trail bike. And something like that helps make trails that are a little bit more on the flowier side, a little bit funner to ride. Another thing that I love about this bike is the frame itself. So not only do I feel like the lines came out really good on the new Sentinel, I feel like it has a very clean look to it but also the frame has a very stiff feel and I did feel that with the spur that I was able to test out earlier in our XC shootout I just feel like transition knows riders are probably gonna be pushing their bikes a little bit more so than maybe some other brands out there the bike also has internal frame storage and what I really like about the internal frame storage on the transition is that it's separate from the actual bottle cage because a lot of times when the internal frame storage latch is gonna be underneath the bottle cage you have to take your bottle off you put it down and by the time you get the mechanical storage you get your bottle back on the bike it's covered with dirt so having it separate from the bottle cage was the pro for me. Now, another thing that I love about the Transition Sentinel is how it climbs. It has a very comfortable pedaling position. I feel like that steep angle is absolutely perfect. And I have a high saddle height, 805, and I still felt like I was on top of that bottom bracket. So longer, steeper climbs are gonna be very comfortable. Now let's talk about some stuff that I didn't necessarily love about the Transition Sentinel. Like I said, the bike definitely has a little bit more of an active suspension design than some other bikes on the market. So you might find yourself reaching for that lockout a little bit more so than some other bikes. Now that's not an issue because as soon as you get that thing locked out, I feel like the bike has a very comfortable pedaling position. And yeah, overall, I was very impressed by how this thing did on the climb, but that is something to note there. Another thing that I would like to point out about the Transition Sentinel is if you're looking for the most nimble trail bike out on the market, I do think that there are some other bikes with slightly shorter rear chainstays that might give you a little bit more cut in and out of corners. This is something to note there is that if you do like the ride quality that shorter chainstays provide, this bike's overall rear chainstay length is going to be slightly longer than some other trail bikes in this category. Another thing that I didn't necessarily love about my time on the Transition Sentinel actually had to do with crank lengths. This is actually one of the first XL test bikes I've gotten with 165 millimeter cranks. Only I run 175. Every now and then I'll go down to 170 if a bike comes with it. There is an industry shift towards going shorter with the crank lengths. Me personally, I have a really high saddle height, like I said, 805, and I do really like long days in the saddle. I just felt like I never really adjusted to the 165 mil cranks. I did feel like I had a little bit more control on the descent. I do see the benefits when it comes time for descent. You have a little bit more control of the bikes and yeah, it definitely is a perk on the downhills. However, for climbing, I think I still would prefer 170 if not 175 mil cranks on this bike. And this bike does have a slightly higher bottom bracket height, so I don't think pedal clearance is gonna be an issue. So yeah, that is something I would probably put on my personal Sentinel is I'd probably put 175s. But other than that, there's not too many things that I don't love about the Transition Sentinel. I feel like Transition did an amazing job of making a very versatile trail bike. This is one of those bikes I think is gonna be loved by people all over the country. Like I said, it's gonna perform perfectly in the PNW as well as British Columbia, but at the same time too, places like Moab, Sedona, South Mountain, Tucson. And yeah, overall, I do think Transition is also one of those companies that when they do something a little bit different, normally you start seeing the rest of the industry follow. I think you're gonna start seeing a lot of other companies following suit and maybe realize that we have gotten to a point in trail bike geometry where maybe long, low, and slack isn't necessarily the update we have to make year after year. Maybe it's time to really take a step back and think, okay, who's gonna be riding this bike and where are they going to be riding it? And I really do think the Transition Sentinel does a very good job of checking a bunch of boxes and it's a very well-rounded trail bike. If you guys have any questions about the Transition Sentinel, let me know in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer them. Be sure to subscribe to the channel because we have so many videos coming out soon, as well as that giant project that I was talking about. Until next time, you guys, ride awesome. Phew.